Thanks. So very happy to say uh, Nick Harris is a journalist who runs the Sporting Intelligence website. He's an investigative reporter as well for the Mail on Sunday. He's been right across financial fair play for many years now. And it's fair to say, Nick, things have blown up in a very big way. You're welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me on. Uh, yesterday, Premier League published a statement on their website without much fanfare, it must be said. It was beneath articles on Harry Kane and Sean Dyche and your fantasy football picks. And this 736-word uh, statement has alleged 100-plus uh, rule breaches on Manchester City's uh, part over a lengthy period, 2009 to 2018. The Premier League investigation has been ongoing for four years. They seem pretty confident in their case. They're moving on with their case. They've referred this to an independent uh, commission and Manchester City seemed to be ambushed uh, somewhat by this. And they released a statement to say, well, we're thrilled this is going ahead because we want to prove our innocence once and for all. Yeah, I mean, it, it did drop without fanfare. Um, I think that was probably deliberate. The Premier League would normally put out press statements to all of us in the media, when it, whether it's anything from a banal fixture change to something that's happened at a board meeting. There was no such release, official release. It was just sat there on the website from the first thing in the morning. Someone spotted it. Um, it was actually uh, a journalist who works on The Times who had gone onto the Premier League website to update their fantasy football team and noticed there was just an article saying Premier League statement and passed that on to uh, a reporter colleague who then, you know, read the story and tweeted out, oh my goodness, this has happened. And that's the first we heard of it. But I think it, it was deliberate on behalf of the Premier League to do that because they have conducted this investigation over more than four years in utmost secrecy and neither side has, has said anything. I think that's a policy decision by the Premier League so that they couldn't be accused of briefing or leaking. So even when they've completed this investigation, which we believe started at the back end of 2018, but was officially confirmed as start as, as being underway in March 2019, um, you know, they've been working for four years. It is potentially huge given that if found guilty of these 115 charges, and we can break them down if you want into different categories of, of things they're looking at, but if found guilty of, of a number or all of these charges, um, then punishments could range from anything to fines and transfer embargoes to stripped points, theoretically stripped titles. I don't really necessarily see that, that happening for various reasons we can discuss, or, or um, expulsion from, from the Premier League. So, yeah, it's really, really serious. It, it's a huge thing. And I don't think, you know, there's been a suggestion that maybe this is the Premier League anticipating there was going to be a big announcement about an independent regulator coming in, decided, oh, well, let's make ourselves look like we really can regulate the game um, and, and that it was some kind of publicity stunt. I don't believe that to be the case. For one thing, um, the Premier League would look pretty stupid if having you know, made 150 char 15 charges against Man City, they failed to actually prosecute and get them convicted. That mm. wouldn't show them to be a particularly effective regulator. So I don't buy into the fact this is a sort of well-timed, you know, PR stunt to say, look, we are look looking into this stuff. I think if after f more than four years of um, investigation into this, Man um, the Premier League, you know, have charged Man City without believing on solid legal grounds that they must have at least a good chance of convictions in quite a lot of the charges. Um, I don't think they would have been sensible to press ahead with this. So it is potentially huge. Mm. Yeah, there's a government uh, white paper. I think it's subsequently been delayed, but there was one due Wednesday on a football regulator. So as you said, people were uh, suggesting, well, this is the Premier League showing we can govern ourselves just fine. We don't need a, a regulator. But I think, as you rightly say, I agree with your analysis. This is far too big an accusation to clumsily uh, wade into. So you mentioned you could give us a, a broad breakdown of the alleged offences. I think people yeah. generally have a good sense of them, or certainly the, the, the categories, Nick. But uh, you might give us a, a, a gist of these 100 plus offences. Yeah, so there's basically five broad categories. The first one is, in effect, um, um, a whole bunch of charges ranging, maybe four or five charges a year for every season between 2009-10 to 2017-18 inclusive. 
broadly in the scope of whether accurate financial information has been provided to the Premier League about um, finances and revenue, including sponsorship revenue. So there's a whole bunch of charges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nearly 50 charges in that category. Have, have the, the Man City provided accurate financial information as they're obliged to under the rules? Uh, so, the second, so in effect, in effect there, the charge is you lied to us year in, year out. Yeah, yeah, in a nutshell, yeah. You provided inaccurate or deliberately false information to us for years and years and years. Okay. Section, uh, the, the second transfer charges are around payments, A and B. A is payments to managers. Again, did the Premier League lie or provide misleading information in respect of how a, a manager or managers were paid? We know that almost certainly Roberto Mancini's contract or contracts is, is being looked at and has been looked at. Um, and then section two or B of section two is actually about um, discrepancies in how the players were paid. Um, now, we don't know the full detail, whether this is underhand or, you know, off the books payments to players or their agents. Yeah. We don't know if it's to do with image rights and whether image rights were paid via the club or via other entities for some years. But basically, the second tranche of things is irregularities in payments to A, managers and B, Players. And to, in, to interrupt on that very briefly, so uh, Der Spiegel in 2018, and, and it seems to have uh, prompted this Premier League investigation in some respects, they published a story where they alleged that, for instance, Roberto Mancini, he would receive his base salary from Man City, uh, 1.2 odd million per year. Uh, but then for four days work in Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Mansour, chairman of the Al Jazeera club there, for four days work training that team, he was given 1.75 million. So the, the implication be there that this is a back channel of sorts. This is uh, money which is given to Mancini and it's not on the Man City books. Therefore, it's not subject to financial fair play. So uh, that was the Der Spiegel report in, in 18. So that's why we know about that specific example. And so clearly yeah. the, the Premier League contention is, well, there's plenty more where that came from. Absolutely. I mean, just for your listeners, on my Twitter handle, which is at Sporting Intel, all one word, I did a thread yesterday and continued it today. It's actually got a lot of, of, of detailed information and links to a lot of the documents that, that, have, the, that are sort of underpinning this. Documents that either I've sourced myself over the last 10, 12 years of reporting on this, and particularly the De Spiegel documents. I did a lot of reporting on the stuff that De Spiegel documents subsequently proved to be true before mm. anyone had heard of football leaks but if you go on the, the twitter handle and find me that thread and follow various leaks you'll you'll actually find for example my, roberto mancini's actual 55 page employment contract with every cough and spit of what of him being paid by the two entities right. it's all there right it, it's it's real documents right. it's in the public domain and you can find those links on that thread that, that's on my twitter in terms of the player things, there's been some suggestions. There was a, there was a De Spiegel story involving a particular player. I won't name him, although his name's in the public domain, whether his agent was paid. But also, I think quite possibly um, the, the irregular or alleged irregularities around payments to players were also to do with image rights because Manchester City at one point during, during this period sort of sold a load, themselves a load of intellectual property to... Um, it would have been a very strange deal around an image rights company. And, you know, is it possible that Manchester City, as a football club, were not paying the players their image rights, but they were getting paid by a third party entity to keep the wage bill down? I think that might be the case. I don't know for sure. Has it been looked at? Is it being looked at? Probably. But yeah, those irregularities over managers and players are those things. And as I said, there's, there's plenty of material if people want to dig in to this. Yes. I mean, the Mancini 55-page employment contract is extraordinary just by itself, and that's one tiny part of this. Okay. Any other charges to mention, or we move on? Oh, uh, yeah. The third section is uh, basically whether um, Manchester City broke any rules in terms of telling the Premier League what they were also telling UEFA um, in terms of UEFA need information to, to run their FFP, financial fair play rules. So there's a couple of alleged breaches or a few alleged okay. breaches over D Did City. The fourth category is uh, in relation to profitability and sustainability rules, i.e. did the club um, give um, the Premier League accurate information 
in order for the Premier League to, to work out whether they were following rules about profitability and sustainability. Mm-hmm. And the fifth tranche of charges, again, there's um, one, two, three, four, five seasons and four, five, six charges per season for more recent seasons about over failure to cooperate with the Premier League's investigation. You know, it's an offence not to cooperate with the Premier League investigation. So there's a whole bunch of charges. So there's five different categories of charges and a whole bunch of charges in each category, adding up to 115 charges in total. OK, so very serious on various fronts. I've heard it said, and um, you can give me your sense of this, that the most egregious offence here on City's part is not so much the bending of financial fair play rules, because we've seen that happen across European football. It's that they lied about it for 10 plus years. That's the egregious aspect, the, the systematic lying. And I understand that, but I also would have thought, well, anyone who bends FFFP uh, rules, I would say, intrinsically, just lies. So, so why is that point being made, do you think, about, well, it, City lied so systemically? That's the, the most um, important aspect here. I guess because it appears from various reporting, including but not only football leaks. I mean, like I said, I've been on this case since 2011 before... Yeah you know, before anything ever came into, you know, before the first FFP um, assessments were made, that Manchester City were going to have to, in inverted commas, cook the books in order to get into within the spending limits. I mean, I was writing this and saying it. There's articles there from 2011 with me writing at the time contemporaneously. These numbers do not add up. Manchester City are spending way too much money To, to, to get within the rules, they are going to have to use creative accounting. I wrote a piece in 2011 that sort of joked or lightheartedly suggested that there's going to have to be a heck of a lot of creative accountancy to, to make these numbers stick up. But, you know, I didn't have any idea at the time. But a lot of things that have subsequently come to light, including paperwork and documents and all sorts of other things, that actually it does appear that that's what they have been doing systematically. Remember, all clubs sign up. To, F, to UEFA's FFP and to the Premier League's FFP as a condition of playing in the competitions. If Manchester City had, had said from the beginning when FFP came in or the Premier League introduced their rules, we, we think these things are fundamentally utterly unfair, we're going to lobby and get them changed, but they didn't. They accepted the rules as part of the competitions that they were in and it does appear that they then went out and systematically undermined the rules deliberately, yeah. i.e. broke them consciously. And, and I, I can use the word cheating without any legal threat, because let's not forget, Manchester City were found guilty of this and punished in 2014 by UEFA without appeal. They didn't appeal. In other words, they 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 agreed that they'd been caught cheating the FFP rules in 2014. Later on, after the Dispiegel, um uh, uh, leaks and the football league stuff. They were then charged again by UEFA and initially handed a two-year ban from the Champions League again for cheating and that successfully overturned that in CAS, the Court of Arbitration for Sport. But they still paid a €10 million, Euro, £9 million pound fine for not cooperating with yeah. the UEFA inquiry. So, yes, I mean, it's long-standing, widespread, systematic, deliberate, pre, you know, pre, pre, um, pre-arranged yeah. cheating and that that's the that's the difference here um, in a way that maybe obviously you know various clubs have been found guilty okay. of FFP infringements on the um, the 2020 UEFA two year ban yeah. so the way people generally uh, regard that is that was overturned in July of 2020 by CAS because uh, UEFA had ignored the statute of limitations there was a five year period and this fell outside the five year period therefore Man City get off almost on a on a technicality that does oversimplify things slightly in that there were also a, a bunch of allegations which the cast panel cleared because they said that the charges were simply quote not established as far as the panel saw it so they did actually get off on on certain uh, charges beyond just statute of limitations what how does this play out now in terms of burden of proof um, in terms of that, that they they did get off, like you said, they were cleared of some charges. They were they were obviously cleared on a technicality because a bunch of stuff was time barred. Yeah. They were also fined a massive amount of money, and you know, ten million euros is is a not insignificant sum of money for non cooperation. And I th- I think that's probably a bit like the the, fo- the on pitch equivalent would be taking a yellow card for the team. 
they took a 10 million fine because they can afford it without blinking. Yeah. Because had they cooperated and handed over all the materials that would have incriminated themselves, possibly, arguably, um, then then they would have been in a lot more trouble. I don't think that's rocket science. Yeah. So, you know, they didn't they didn't they didn't cooperate, basically. And they took the fine and they didn't appeal that fine. So they kind of have de facto admitted they didn't cooperate. Um, in terms of burden of proof, this will now go before an independent commission chaired by uh, an, an eminent um, KC and, and a few other people, and they will they will be candid all the evidence that the legal firm Bird and Bird have amassed on behalf of the Premier League over the last four years, and it will be an arbitration process where Manchester City will lawyer up and come in and make make their arguments about. Um, um, you know why that why they're not guilty, and this this commission will decide y- yay or nay. I mean, it, it's that simple. Again, in terms of burden of proof, I would say the burden of proof in this case is going to be less onerous than than UEFA because these are Premier League rules. Um, there's, there's no time barring. Um, the Premier League set the rules, and it, if it's clearly demonstrable that Man City did break the rules, yes. then then that's it. And you, I just come back to this idea of of you'd you'd imagine that having spent four years and taking a lot of care and taking a lot of care to keep this secret the premier league would have done their job properly but we won't know and and man city will spend a lot of money hiring the best lawyers in the world and it's been announced today that lord panic who costs up to eighty thousand pounds a day is going to be their kc in this case leading their team yeah um i knew uh you know, those guys charge a lot of money. I didn't quite realise we were at eighty k a day, but there we go. That's just an ancillary point. All this, uh, yeah, the fear we—I we, was going to say fear yeah. we would all have, but let's say the neutral who wants to see uh, fair play uh, would have—is that this arbitration process, funded by this eighty k a day hotshot lawyer, goes on forever, and in the end, everything gets watered down. Everybody gets sick of the whole thing, and Man City. Uh, end up paying some kind of a fine which won't cost them a second thought but refuse to admit guilt. Or there, there's some wishy-washy outcome. That that would be the cynical suspicion that people would have. Uh, what chance of Man City being found uh, in the wrong? I, I suspect given what you've said about the nature of this investigation, you think the, the Premier League won't have come, out the, come at this without have, feeling they have a very good case. So let's assume there's uh, something approaching a guilty verdict. Uh, the punishment will have to go beyond a fine or even, you know, you're hit with a 10-point deduction. I mean, how likely are we to, to see Manchester City being stripped of titles or kicked out of the league, Nick? Uh, my hunch would be unlikely to see anything as severe as that. Um, however, let me qualify that. Um, in terms of um, stripped of titles, my hunch would say they probably would step back from that because it's in a way it's a retrospective punishment and then it becomes very complicated over who actually gets the title in in place of them is it as simple as saying well the team that finished runner-up in the years that they won titles or cups should be awarded it It, it's just legally not that simple i'm not ruling it out but i think it gets complicated in terms of um expulsion you know there's a lot of people i've spoken to in the last day or two legal people people who've been involved in different arbitrations would say that you know on the face of it these charges are much more serious that manchester city facing than than rangers in scotland were facing when they were kicked down to the fourth division so if found guilty maybe there is a case for expulsion but again it's it's a nuclear option i'm not saying it won't happen but i would have thought that if found guilty on a lot of or most of these charges the punishment would be to punish them going forward so that might be a number of years of no transfers it might be limits on spending really tightly monitored and more than that it would be a points deduction in one or more seasons going forward now again we speculate it, it could be it could be relatively minor but i think if they're found guilty of a lot of these charges the premier league are going to have to demonstrate you know that they will not stand for this kind of egregious cheating that's if found guilty yes. big if in which case would a massive points penalty let's say for sake of argument it does actually get wrapped up not in years but sometime before the beginning of next season my hunch again might be that it will be done this calendar year i'm not i'm thinking it's already taken four years city have already stymied it for years through the courts and in other ways so 
you know, the case is there now. The evidence is there. It's up to the, this committee to judge it and city to defend it. And yes, they'll try and pull it out. But let's assume that they came back with a, with a verdict before next season and they found guilty, big if, qualifier. But there, there may be the punishment is a massive points penalty and they start next season on minus 50 or minus whatever. Something that would actually put them in jeopardy of relegation. Um, but then City being City, they could rack up 90 or 100 points and be comfortably safe next season. But that would be my hunch. Mm. But you you can't tell in these in these situations. I You have to think that, as again, I'm repeating myself, but if, if it's taken four years and the Premier League have done this, push the nuclear button, they must have a degree of confidence they're going to get this over the line. Mm. But I don't know. Uh, fascinating. Nick, thank you so much. Appreciate it. OK, thanks for having me on. No, thank you. Nick Harris there. Sporting Intelligence website is uh, where you can find all of Nick's work. Our football show coverage brought to you by Sky. Watch every live Premier League game this season. Sky Sports, BT Sport, Premier Sports. Dan McDonald with us between 9 and 10.